Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. There are times when we get so discouraged, we get so disillusioned by life, by the disappointments in life, that we just don't feel like fighting anymore. We just want to give up the fight, give up the ghost on the challenge, sit down, cross our arms, and just say, forget it. I'm tired of hoping. I'm tired of wishing. I'm tired of seeking. I'm tired of asking. I'm tired of no, 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 sorry, no. That's a lot of us. But what God will often tell you right when you're at your wit's end is look again, ask again, seek one more time, take another look. And we get frustrated with God because all we've gotten is no, no, close, 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 shut, 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 lock, 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 goodbye. But God didn't say, go by what you got. He said, go by what I said. Now, one day, the Lord told me, I know you've heard the story, so I'm just, just making a point here. The Lord told me when we were looking under his instruction for a place to live, he told me, turn on your computer, I got something for you. I turn on my computer, I'm disgusted, I'm tired, I'm tired of crying, I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of being disappointed. I'm tired of all the rich folks with money and all the connections, getting all the inside scoop, going in, knowing when properties are up and they go and pay cash. And those of us, us knuckleheads, us ordinary people who have to wait for them to accept our offer. You know, we don't even get our offer heard because these people with money their pockets lined with money who can get loans from the government from, you know, just because they're foreigners, they can get loans that we can't even touch. And all these people get the advantage and we get the doors shut in our face before we even get our foot in the door. Frustrating. Makes you angry. Made me angry. So I'm looking. He said, I got something for you. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And now I'm getting exasperated with God. Well, Lord, what you got me looking for? It's all the same. There's nothing changed. Everything that was good is taken. What did God tell me to do? Right after I said that, look again. And I'm like my friend on the other video. <sighs> what am I looking for? So I said, okay, well, he said, look again. Let me look again. You know what that reminds me of before I get to the point? When Jesus got in the boat with Peter, and Peter and his team had fished all day long and caught nothing, and Jesus said, launch your net off or, or throw your net on the other side. Now, you're in a boat. You're in a boat. You're in a body of water. Any kind of two cents of of intelligence or, or uh, logic will tell you, I'm in the boat in a body of water. Whether I throw it on the left side, the right side, behind me or in front, it's the same body of water with the same fish. What's up? What you telling me to put it back in there for? We've been here all night. We're tired. Throw your net on the other side. Against all of Peter's wisdom and logic. He does it. He obeys God's word. Whatever Jesus said, he did. Nevertheless, he did it. He dumps it in the water against his own will. And lo and behold, he's got to call all the ten. Get over here. Help us. About to make the poor boat sink. All these fish come out of nowhere. Where'd they come from? They weren't on this side. They weren't there. They weren't there. How come they here? Same body of water. When God says to do something, you do it against all your own normal judgment. You do it. Because when God says it, something's going to happen. So God told me, look again. See, that's that tenacity. Sometimes you got to go against your own better judgment and obey God out of tenacity. 
even though everything in you is says, what's the use? Do it anyway. Obey. So I'm looking again, and I'm like, Lord, what am I looking for? That was my attitude. But he spoke to me, and that, that's a privilege right there. So I'm not going to ignore him. I'm looking, and I'm looking. Like, what am I looking for? I'm looking at the computer screen. What am I looking for? And I said, oh, I never saw that before. A green arrow. A green arrow. Let me draw it in the, in the window. An arrow. Okay, here we go. There's the arrow. And it goes down. It's pointing downward. And I'm looking, I'm following the downward roll, and I see the price. Price drop. Oh! So I go from the fur from the top of the list all the way down. And lo and behold, there's a house that was $84,000 that in the summertime had been $90,000. $84,000. It dropped by $10,000 to $74,000. Oh, that's within range. Where well, now? I dialed the little real estate agent and said, uh, can you check out this property? Because I'm thinking, right, some, some, some know-it-all going to try to get in there and swoop it up and pay cash. So I'm like, Lord, hold it for us if, if that's what you want for us. And she says, yes. And I said, can we offer uh, 65000 She pushed me up to sixty nine. I think it was 68. Uh, she just wanted some more commission because it was such a cheap house anyway. Not a cheap house. It was at the bottom of the market in the crash. The crash. God knew we did not have an inside scoop. God knew we had no connections. God knew we didn't have cash in hand to get it out from anybody else. So what did he do? He told us the day it dropped, while everybody else was out Christmas shopping, including all the investors. They were Christmas shopping. Nobody was paying attention. Two days before Christmas. Right. God got it for me. He was my inside scoop. He was my connection. And we got it for 68 9 1,408 square foot, two-story house in a senior gated community. Something that somebody with my income should never have been able to put my hands on. Hmm. Okay. So... My point to you is my husband got everything he wanted in a home. Everything. I got everything I wanted in a home. We both enjoyed this place like it was an amusement park. God made a way where there was no way. We get all the way up to the closing cost. What's up with the closing cost? The best we could do. We did the best we could. I mean, we cut out all the fluff of our, out of our life. And we sacrificed to save up the closing cost. And we could not. All we could say in two months' time was, I think it was $1,800. That was the best we could do. We kept Milton's money in the account. We didn't touch his little Social Security and the only money we lived on was the money that I had. That money was for the closing cost. He was the one signing for the house. So sure enough, we ended up, this is crazy. We were, our backs were up against the wall. We had two weeks to go to come up with the rest of the closing costs or we were at a loss. And yes, we prayed on that bad boy. Because we were not going to let go of what God was already trying to give us. So we went to our church. And we were asking for a loan. A loan. And they told us, uh, here's your elder. Have him talk to the pastor. Tell him your situation. I told the elder the situation. He calls the pastor. 
The pastor calls, the pastor tells the elder to call me, tell me to come down Thursday to pick up the check. The check. You know how much we needed to finish closing? $3,500. No way. There was nobody on this earth that we knew that had that kind of money just laying around, let alone to lend it to us. Oh, we got out there. I'm telling the pastor, before you hand me the check, I need to let you know. This is what I'm trying to tell you. When God has something for you, it's for you. Without strain. Without the strain. I'm telling her. Now listen. Before you hand me the check, you may decide not to. Because it's going to take us two months. Because all the little extra little change I'm trying to hang on to is going to be used for turning on our utilities. So it'll be two months before we can start paying you back. She looks up at me. She's a little short, a little something. So cute. She looks up at me and says, this isn't a lending institution. This is a gift. We're helping you. I was floored. I couldn't believe it. We don't have to pay $3,500. We don't have to pay that back. Are you serious? Eh. She hands me the whole check, gives me a hug, prays for me, blesses me, and I'm on my way. Deal done. We made closing cost. We got all our utilities turned on. Found out when you foreclose, you also get a $3,000 allowance for moving expenses. <gasps> Oh, everything we needed right there on time. When God is in something and your back is up against the wall, you've done your best. We, there were certain things we had to do, certain sacrifices we had to make. God did the rest. He said, I got it from here. I got you, got your back. How bad do you want it? How strong are you willing to cling to God and believe him to come through for you? He propped us up on our leaning side. He came through with flying colors. Don't be so quick to allow the situation to dictate your reaction. No, you go by God's word, not by what your eyes see. Not by what your ears hear. Not by what your little pea brain understands. You go by what God says. Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will direct your path. All right. Mamacita has spoken.